We're running today for testing whether the new release of the SL20 uh, version 3 from Adidas. Uh, let's see how they feel. Uh, I believe pretty much similar to the previous version, even though the upper is uh, a, bit, a little bit different. So let's check it out. See you soon, guys. Oh, quite chilly today. No! Guys, I'm Stelvio, this is Koryamune, Community for Bulldogs Running. We are always talking about different running gears, trainings, time trials and races. In this video I'll give you my first impressions about the Adidas S20 version 3 and let's check if it can be used as a daily trainer. As usual, an important remark, I bought this pair of shoes with my money and no one is paying me for this review. So, starting from the hustle. Who said the grip? Since the pattern design is pretty much the same, I would say. It's, it's the same grip, nothing different. Uh, of course, it's durable. It has the continental rubber. Uh, so as we have seen already in the previous version, it lasts at least 500 kilometers because my SL20 version 2 uh, It's still a good grip after 500 kilometers So I would say for the house so Pretty much good work I'm happy with it In terms of uh, stiffness since the material used is the same, uh, the sound in the ground is the same. So it is not that stiff and thick like the asshole in the Adio 6. So I would say it's perfect for such kind of trainings. Slow runs, long runs. So, yeah, I like it. Ooh, pretty windy now, eh? Chilly and windy. Mm. I like it. So let's try some sprints now to see if it's responsive or not. Like the previous version, I would say, it's also very responsive. Of course, uh, I don't know, I, I would say I prefer the Audio 6 for speed workouts. Still, it's my favorite. I checked the running dynamics for different pages. If you don't know what these dynamics mean, you can have a look on left hand side, there is a quick explanation. But basically we are talking about the response and the efficiency of the shoe at different running pace. Pretty similar dynamics, even though the difference of drop with the previous version, uh, it has 1.5 mm less than in the previous version. Of course the response and the efficiency is uh, not that bad increasing the pace, especially because the shoe is new. But as I said, after 80 km, uh, already the form is the forefoot become floppy so the feeling during uh, fast workouts is not that great in regard the mid so the form used in the mid sole is the fast track 
that you already seen in the previous video so in the entire midsole <laughs> and uh, yeah especially first kilometers it's pretty stiff and uh, I can feel now in the heel if I try to land and force me to uh, land in the heel I can see now it is a little bit stiffer so yeah, but after 50 kilometers start to be more comfortable for uh, such kind of training yeah. so yeah let's do other few sprints for my legs I mean, this is a nice place More durable, much more durable than uh, the boost form. I, I've seen it in the previous model, especially in the heel area. In the forefoot, uh, after 500 km, it got a little, a little bit floppy. So uh, I prefer issues for so I need Here is a little bit more protected from the wind, so that's up. That is less windy. <laughs> Swimming pool in the Danube, <laughs> pretty nice, but especially during summer. Look <laughs> at the ceiling. Now we are oh, a little bit faster than expected. Four minutes fifty seconds per kilometer. But actually, the upper is the main difference from the previous version, but now I will show you. Here yeah, maybe it's better. <coughs> you see the different material used? Oh, maybe it's the same material, but different mesh. And you can see here that there is a little bit more room if you have a thinner fit than mine, uh, that is already thin, I would say, but uh, as I know from from you guys, there is people there that have a thinner fit, uh, it could be an issue. Of course, if you are looking these shoes for uh, fart or other fast workouts, then this kind of room in the forefoot could be annoying. Uh, so in this case, uh, I would not suggest uh, the shoes uh, and I would prefer the previous version so this is pretty much it I would say uh, it's breathable because my my feet are freezing uh, today we have a, a kind of a 4 or 5 degrees Celsius pretty much windy so it's breathable I would say not that breathable as the other 6 there are still this rings uh, in the laces that I don't like in the previous version one of these rings it was different but one of these uh, rings got broken 
uh, after I don't know it was 250 kilometers uh, if you haven't seen this video I can uh, link the video here up here uh, but you, they still uh, use this kind of rings here that I don't know uh, then they looks not that solid uh, so I don't like it uh, but yeah and uh, for the rest you see also the ear counter is uh, it seems to be similar maybe a little bit more rigid uh, here so yeah suggested this daily trainer or for long runs as always guys it's time for the conclusion i would not use sl20 version 3 for racing because the weight but i would rather use it uh, as a daily trainer uh, because it's quite durable especially uh, it has a, a great grip uh, and uh, the shoe is comfortable even for slower pace but uh, especially because it's cheap and uh, it is uh, around 130 euro and um, with a season sale you can find it uh, uh, around 80 euro which is great not sure about the durability of the upper because the different mesh used uh, than in the uh, previous uh, version but we will check it uh, after 100 miles i hope guys this video was interesting if you don't want to miss any new video i suggest you to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you will get notified every time i have to say something new about the new show so guys this is it for today if you like this content please please don't forget to leave a like and uh, as usual thanks for watching Keep running and till the next time, see you. Ciao.